Oh, God. I know. Life is stressful. What better way to leave those worries behind than to cast off and begin life anew as a simple fisherman? Drive your boat around, gather up the ocean's glorious bounty, improve your seaworthy skiff, meet some mysterious locals, and deal with the terrifying effects of, um, sleep paralysis. Hello everybody, it's me, Boss Sauce. And I'm Roland Kunz. And together, we, we are, are the, the Two-Headed two Hero. There's a ton of great looking indie games in the coming soon column. It's hard to pick just one out of the swirling noise vortex of our modern day internet landscape, but every so often, we stumble upon something that looks promising and unique. Today we're doing something a little different. We aim to give you a little heads up for one such title, an upcoming sea salvage adventure from Black Salt Games. Join us as we set our spyglass on the demo of Dredge. Ah, the sea. The rich smell of salt on the breeze, the sun sinking into the vast horizon, the sickening crunch of your ship running aground on a lighthouse. Upon waking up on the docks, the mayor of Greater Marrow immediately loans you a barnacle-encrusted replacement boat and puts you into indentured servitude. This is how Dredge introduces you to the Greater Marrow area and the mysterious archipelago that surrounds it. Enough of this poppycock, H.P. Lovecraft here. Get to the... Get to the fish fucking, please! On the surface, Dredge is a game with some pretty calm vibes. You tool around in your little boat, catching some fish, or dredging up some scrap with this little judgment ring minigame, and tetrising your gains within the ship's hold into a good old-fashioned great inventory! Whew! Yeehaw! Gonna have a humdinger of a time with this one! Look at all this! Oh, most of this game is moving little blocks around and cramming them in places where they daren't need go! After a few introductions to the island's inhabitants, you'll be able to take on various tasks and fill orders for them, and this in turn hints at several available upgrade trees in the game's full version. Time only moves when you're doing something, whether it's fishing, sleeping, or just puttering around in your trusty little vessel. This removes much of the pressure, placing more of an emphasis on planning your trips and making Dredge a more relaxed experience. Well, at first. As you explore these sparsely populated islets, your ears are beset with the lapping of waves, the grind of the reel, and the gentle constant hum of the engine, until the audio gradually lulls you into the soundtrack. Airy pads punctuated by sprinklings of piano, harp, and flute enforce a feeling somewhere between relaxation and foreboding. The low poly look isn't for everyone, but I think Dredge really pulls it off here. The islands are brought to life as trees whip around in the wind and waves lap the shorelines. Muted grays, browns, and greens contrast with the translucent turquoise water, invoking images of small North Atlantic islands. Character portraits echo the game's low poly style with a sort of cubist oil painting flavor, and the way that they've combined the two is pretty masterful, I will say. The illustration, though it's 2D work and just a completely different discipline, is fully blended together with the low poly 3D work. The day-night cycle is especially important. Nighttime provides your ambitious little angler with more opportunities to catch rare trophy fish and corrupted mutant sea beasts. The fishmonger finds these specimens particularly interesting, and they fetch a good price. The fresher the better, of course. <laughs> it's me! Uh, the part of the fishmonger will be played by I, H.P. Lovecraft, and I find these specimens particularly interesting. <laughs> Whiskey. Old man in the sea. Old man in the sea. Get out of here, Hemingway. Your time is over. Now is the time of Lovecraft! Strange events occur in the dead of night out on these unfathomable waters. For example, something sinister might slither into the hold and infect your catch, or crows might swarm your boat and steal the loot right off the deck. Or hostile fish might even frenzy and drive holes into the hull. Nighttime is also much more dangerous to navigate. 
Jagged rocks will often pop up out of nowhere, and ferrying around in the dark constantly drains your sanity, which causes you to black out for a time. Let's just say you'll notice from the beginning that something is very fishy about these islands, and it's not just your cargo hold, which is full of fish. Are we going to talk about this cool-ass cargo hold? Yeah, let's talk about it more. Uh, grid inventory, my favorite. Upgradable grid inventory, double favorite. Slight puzzle mechanic, where you can only fit certain equipments into certain equipment slots. So you kind of have to parcel out whether you want to take more fishing rods or whether you want to have more room for your catch. The grid inventory management puzzle is, I would say, the second pillar of Dredge's gameplay. So you, you've got the fishing mechanic, right? You've got the grid inventory decision making. So like, is it worth it to stay out at sea and go to this particular fishing spot that has smaller fish maybe to just like cram a couple more in there or should i just lump some of these big chunksters into my hold and have a bunch of gaps in my cargo and then just like speed on back to port to dump those there's some interesting decisions to make all the time it's not just limited to fish like there's the dredging part as well where you're dredging pieces of lumber and metal out of old shipwrecks and you've got to kind of make snap decisions as to what you're going to keep in your hold so you got to kind of aim at what you want to take with you equipment wise as to what your objective is it adds kind of a cool little management sub game to the game the specific shapes of everything are tetris blocks are just as important as their sizes and their use and their values and then there's the whole meta game of improving the town of greater marrow which is kind of you're indentured into it from the beginning of the game by the mayor. All this stuff together clicks a lot of boxes for me that I wouldn't normally like. If you say, this game's about fishing, I'd be like, hmm. I've been looking for a good, solid fishing RPG for a while. I like when a fishing mechanic in a role-playing game has lasting and important effects on the rest of the game. But even more what I hunger for is an RPG that is just about fishing. And those are pretty rare. The stuff that ticks my boxes is, okay, you got a kind of spooky story game going on here that are kind of rooted in those base mechanics of fishing stuff up and giving them to people. You can uncover little tidbits about the story of Greater Marrow and the surrounding islands. The other thing is like a shipbuilder, her side quest is she wants to get off of the island of Greater Marrow and go be a hermit. So you go dredge up a few pieces of lumber and metal so you can bring them to her so she can complete her thing and then she helps you out by unlocking an entire upgrade path. So it's like really cool ways that they introduce those mechanics and put them into what I'm assuming will shape up to be the greater game. And there are multiple upgrade paths too, or at least there will be. So there's the books, kind of like a little research perk, and you set and forget one until a certain amount of time passes. And those were kind of like the Disco Elysium thoughts. You pick one to think about <laughs> or read or whatever, and then over time, as you're playing the game, you just get a thing. And I think the second one was the ship rights path, which is a different character, and she can make certain things more efficient on your craft. Right, and there's also buying new gear. Dredge hints at plenty of side storylines to untangle. What was in that package you just delivered, and why did the dock worker hide its contents from you? What is the cause of the corruptions and mutations and why is the fishmonger so interested in these? <laughs> Who was the previous mayor? And what was his grisly fate? The story is carefully parceled out through the environment and conversations. Not a single character seems to have a proper name. Each is only referred to by occupation, like the fishmonger, the mayor, or the shipwright. This sense of ambiguity makes the story feel more like a tall tale being rattled off by a salty old sailor in a forgotten booth of a dilapidated seaside tavern. I'll tell you about that fateful night where I found a fish. That was the story. So far, Dredge is shaping up into a clever balancing act between the feeling of having a menial job with relaxing seafaring and the slow burn creep factor of a Lovecraftian horror tale. 
I mean, it's got the chill factor and management stuff that I'm pretty sure is your thing, plus the spooky time stuff and the narrative tidbits on top. That lands squarely in my tastes. The demo only has a small portion of the islands available, but the one to two hour runtime is more than enough to get your sea legs. Overall, we both felt that this is an experience to be savored, and we're really looking forward to uncovering more of the nautical mysteries in Dredge when it releases next year. Anyways, thanks for taking the time out of your busy day to check out this little video of ours. We really appreciate it. If you've got ideas on what you'd like to see on our channel, let us know down in the comments or shoot us a tweet. If you haven't already, maybe tap that subscribe button down there and touchy the bell if you want to know when our next foray into interesting indies or forgotten retro games takes place. If you really like us, uh, maybe share this video with your buddies on Reddit or social media. That really helps us grow the channel so that we are encouraged to make more of these little episodes. Thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next Two-Headed Hero. It is an archipelago. I had to use that word. <laughs> archipelago. 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 Every, every, everywhere. Archipelago. 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 Yeah, that was good. Good jam. That was nice. I felt that one.